Hello and welcome back to Park Family Parley with Kieran Downey, emergency edition. And we have some breaking news on our hands at half past six on a Monday evening. And that is from 2026. Y'all are going to be watching 11 teams racing in Formula One. That's right, I did say this was breaking news. In an official statement from Formula One, it has announced that F1 has reached an agreement in principle with General Motors to support bringing General Motors Cadillac as the 11th team from 2026 onwards. Can you believe it? We are gonna have 11 teams from 2026. I, I am shook. I am absolutely shook. Some of you may be asking yourselves, why General Motors, why not Andretti? But before we dive into that, let's fully dive into the statement from Formula One and break down what it all means and what is gonna be happening going from 26 onwards because Cadillac, which will be the team, will be using a General Motors engine. That won't be till after they've entered the sport. So as I said, Formula One has confirmed that it is agreed a deal in principle with General Motors and it's Cadillac brand over entering the series in 2026 as the 11th team. The statement from Formula One reads, with Formula One's continued growth plans in the United States, we have always believed that welcoming an impressive US brand like General Motors Cadillac to the grid and General Motors as a future power unit supplier could bring additional value and interest to the sport. This was made by the outgoing Liberty Media CEO and President Greg Maffey. He goes on to say, we credit the leadership of General Motors and their partners with significant progress in their readiness to enter Formula One. We are excited to move forward with the application process for the GM Cadillac team to enter the championship in 2026. Obviously, General Motors Cadillac is a huge US brand. Now, am I surprised that Formula One has agreed for a big US brand like General Motors Cadillac to enter? No. We all know that Liberty Media has plans to make Formula One huge in the US and they are all about growing the sport over there. So I'm not surprised that we're going to have manufacturers like General Motors and brands like Cadillac entering the sport. Now, as of last week, I was fairly convinced that this was going to be happening and that it was going to be happening within the next few years, but that the announcement would probably come after Abu Dhabi. I didn't think we would get it in between Vegas and Qatar. And whilst there was a lot of rumblings and rumours and it kind of seemed like we would maybe never get an 11th team, especially after Andretti got rejected. When the General Motors officials were spotted at the Las Vegas Grand Prix, it was all but confirmed. Um, they were there with Formula One and Liberty Media to discuss the entry as um, as the 11th team and what, what was needed to happen. So what does this mean? What's going to happen? The obvious, we're going to have another two cars racing from 2026, another team in the paddock. We are going to have a General Motors Cadillac brand uh, racing. And from 2028 onwards, we're going to have a General Motors power unit in those cars. They are going to make their own power units, but they don't have enough time to get power units ready before 2028. So they will enter as a customer team. I don't know who they will be a customer of in terms of their engines, but I imagine it will probably be Ferrari or Honda. Um, when Andretti was entering the sport, they were looking at using Renault engines. Renault has obviously shut down its engine program um, and I can't see them going to the likes of Mercedes or Red Bull Ford, um, I imagine they will go with the likes of Ferrari or Honda. My money's on Ferrari. There was also a little bit of speculation that General Motors would take over uh, Renault's 2026 engine IP, but it's now expected that they will just develop and build its own engines for 2028 and just be a customer team so that they can fully just do their own thing. Which, do you know what, I'm not against. I'm really not against that. As I said, I think the big question that everyone is sort of having is why General Motors and why not Andretti? So General Motors was working with Andretti Global on a prospective F1 bid. It was accepted by the governing body, the FIA, but it was refused by F1 itself because the bid wasn't deemed to add enough value to Formula One. There was a huge kickoff about it. Everybody disagreed with it. I kind of disagreed with it. I was quite excited about the prospect of Andretti joining. There then turned out to be a little bit of tension between uh, Andretti figurehead Michael Andretti and the F1 executives because Andretti 
was very aggressively campaigning to join the grid and I think it really put a sour taste in F1's mouth. Now despite Formula One's rejection of Andretti, they really hammered home. They really, really like, they got aggressive in trying to get into the grid and I think Formula One almost deemed it as they were trying to push their way in. They continued to build up their F1 program at Silverstone. They were hiring staff. They were producing wind tunnel models for a 2026 car. Like they were going full force. Obviously F1 had rejected them. They then got the US Congress and the Department of Justice involved and Formula One was basically questioned as to why they weren't allowing Andretti in. And I think at that point, Formula One was like, absolutely not. Created a huge bit of tension between Andretti and Formula One and it just felt like we were never going to get there and we never are to be fair. However since then Michael Andretti has actually stepped back from the Andretti organization and has ceded control to the majority owner Dan Tyrus and that happened in September. Tyrus and General Motors then continued their efforts to present a more rounded and compelling bid with a bigger commitment from General Motors as a bona fide constructor um, and that has obviously been agreed in principle. Now in order for the team to be ready to enter in 2026 they are going to have to take over the existing Andretti Global project because of all the short lead times involved. Andretti was already full steam ahead for a 2026 entry and to just make everything a bit easier Cadillac GM will take over that whole project just outside of Silverstone. As I said they're obviously not going to have enough time to supply works engines before 2028 so they will probably look at Ferrari and Honda, that's the most likely. And with General Motors taking over the Andretti project they're going to have people like Pat Simmons, they're going to have a number of Alpine employees that have left and gone to the Andretti project. They have the former Renault engine tech boss I believe it is, Rob White, who was the latest to join as their COO. So they're going to have quite a good, you know, some solid people there to, to really take this, uh, take this entry on. And I am very excited about this. I am so, so excited. What I'm really excited about in all of this as well is how many engine suppliers we're going to have. Like, we've got obviously got Mercedes, Ferrari, Ford is going to be in there with Red Bull, Honda down at Aston Martin. We're going to have Audi, we're going to have General Motors. Like, it's just very exciting to have that number of engine suppliers working within Formula One. It's, it's really exciting. Do you know what else I'm really excited for is having an additional two race seats in 2026. Like, I'm really intrigued to know who they're going to, who they're going to hire to race these cars because as I've said when we've spoken about like teams sort of picking their driver lineup they're probably going to get somebody that's quite fresh to F1 so if you're going to have a sort of rookie per se I always think it's best to line that up with experience because you could just saying we could get the likes of Valtteri Bottas and Colapinto. Doesn't seem like Colapinto is going to be continuing in Formula One next year. Maybe he goes back to F2 for a year and then moves on up to, to Cadillac. Now, whoever they do tap to drive these cars, I reckon that we will get an Indy car driver moving to Formula One. Like, I reckon that we're going to have somebody that's never driven an F1 before. They maybe have done a wee practice session, that's why I'm saying like Pato Awards, but I do reckon that we'll get someone from IndyCar in that team. I think it just to really hammer home that American vibe. Obviously IndyCar is quite big in the States being an American brand could just to sort of help solidify the Americanness of it all do we get an, Indy, an American IndyCar driver. I don't think it's out of the realms of possibility. As I said I do reckon we'll have somebody that maybe is a little bit experienced in F1 paired with a, a rookie per se that they, they don't have to be like 18, they don't have to be fresh out the box, but there could be somebody that has done motorsport racing but just hasn't done F1 yet. I don't know, it's all just very exciting, I don't know who they're going to tap, I actually think it's too early to predict and I mean to God with this sport it could be anybody, I mean sometimes the teams are not even certain that the drivers are going to do the next race let alone the next year. So the other bit of news that I forgot to mention when we were talking about the Mario Andretti of it all 
is that Andretti will actually be serving as a director on the team's board. Andretti says, my first love was Formula One and now 70 years later, the F1 paddock is still my happy place. I'm absolutely thrilled with Cadillac, Formula One, Mark Walter and Dan Tyrus. To still be involved at this stage of my life, I have to pinch myself to make sure I'm not dreaming. Listen, as much as it's not going to be called Andretti, I, there was no doubt that Mario Andretti wouldn't be somewhere around this, this team. Uh, do I think that him stepping back from the efforts maybe made a difference? I 100% do. 100%. I think him being a director and not sort of the one running the operation, I think that has helped slightly. I am pumped for 2026 now. Like, we're going to have new regulations, new cars, new team on the grid. Like, it's going to be so exciting. Like, my little mind feels like it's going to explode with how excited I am. And we've not even we've not even finished 2024 yet. And 2025 is going to be one hell of a season as well. But that is everything from us. Let us know down below what you think. What are your thoughts and feelings on General Motors Cadillac entering the sport from 26? And if you aren't already, make sure to follow along on social media at Park Fermi Parlay. That is everything from us. We'll see you soon. Love you. Bye.